Hey Jacinta, thank you so much for joining us today. No um, I was just practicing your surname and I, I honestly like, growing up myself, my teachers would never call me by my surname. Is that something that made you feel unique? That you can, you know, portray your story but also own up to that? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely always been a conversation starter with people. I mean, uh, it's a difficult name. It looks quite intimidating. 16 letters, so it's... But once you get to it, once you say it, it's easy. So you give it a go. Yeah, so like mine's 15 letters. Oh, okay. So, Gala Badarachi. Yeah. Hey! That was good. That was good. I think the hardest part is the B and the D is yeah. always the hardest mm -hmm. part. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, thank you so much for coming to Ultra today. Mm -hmm. This is a series where we just get to meet you and talk to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being a part of the shoot. Yeah. How was it being back in town? You know, now representing Celtic and getting caught up to the Matildas. How has it been for you like the last 12 months? Yeah, it's, it's been amazing. I mean, um, ever since I joined Celtic, I've really been enjoying it. I mean, I had a bit of a slow start. Um, you know, adjusting to being away from home for so long, being away from my family. It was tough, especially with COVID and everything. But the last, like you said, the last 12 months I've really kicked off. And I've been really enjoying my football and the lifestyle there. It's been amazing. Um, and then obviously, always coming back home is the best, seeing family. I mean, it's gone so quick. I mean, I'm leaving in a couple of days. Um, but, you know, it's while I've been home, seeing friends, seeing family, it's amazing. You said something before in our chat on the 10 essentials, you're from mm -hmm. Casey. Mm -hmm. I never knew that. So yeah. now, you know, of course, being an alumni for Melbourne City, mm -hmm. how is it for you coming back to Melbourne, but seeing your side of town represented in a sense that, you know, what was seen so far away now seems a part of Melbourne? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing. I mean, like that was uh, Casey was my first club. I mean, and to think about how far I've come from then to now. Um, yeah, it's been how, how many years? Of Jeez, uh, 15 years now, no, 15, 16 years since I played for Casey. That was my first club, so I was about five years old when I joined. Um, but yeah, it's, it's amazing to come back home and see everything and how it is now compared to when I started. And your brother's one of your heroes. Yes. That was a beautiful story. I think when it comes to family inspiring each other, it's something that, you know, we always have mums and dads, but mm -hmm. um, having siblings has been an inspiration. Is it something now that you can be like, you know, when you play on the game day, you sort of represent them as well? Yeah, of course. I mean, I always say to myself, um, you know, when times get hard with football and, you know, you, do, you know, sometimes you don't always want to do everything and yeah. work as hard, but you just think, you know, you have to do it for your family as well, for everything that I've sacrificed. Being in Scotland so yeah, far away. Exactly. Um, so when days get hard, I just think about doing it for my family and they've sacrificed so much for me to be where I am today. And, um, you know, playing football with, for so many years with my brother, um, you know, I played for him and he was my inspiration growing up. So yeah, I do it for them a lot. Representing the Green Gold soon, which is amazing because when we found out here, we were ecstatic. And I think when it comes to you know women's football, it's going to be a big year next year here. Mm. To see you represent not only your family, but more than just that. Are you excited to finally be playing in front of a home crowd after being away for so long? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's been a while since I've been involved with the Matildas, um, but to finally be back in it and obviously to have the Women's World Cup being hosted here, it's incredible for football um, and I think it'll be amazing, the amount of fans that will come will be incredible um, and yeah, I'm just looking forward to the camp mm -hmm. and to show the team and the coaches and the coaching staff what I can do, um, so yeah, it's exciting. You've been in the football industry for a very long time yeah. um, and like I said, seeing you at City to where you are now, you've pursued an amazing career and you're still in young in many aspects of the footballing career um, how was going away from family like moving away from Melbourne to Perth and Perth overseas mm -hmm. is there something you've learned over time because you know personally a lot of people can say this being away from family for like three to four days mm -hmm. is tough mm -hmm. but it's been a very long time for you and of course with the pandemic in mind mm -hmm. what's your strong, strongest uh, mindset how do you stay headstrong yeah, I mean, um, you know, I don't lie about it to people. I struggled a lot at the start. Yeah. Um, like, if anybody knows me, they know how close I am with my family. I mean, I was homeschooled, so mm -hmm. it's not like I was away from family for many hours throughout the day. Yeah, so that's a mom. lot harder exactly. to be away. I um, was with my brother all day, so initially when I moved away, um, especially playing for West Ham, that was my first time really being mm -hmm. halfway across the world from my family. So it was tough. The transition was tough. But as time went on, you know, you just you learn to sort of not let go of your family but let go of your life back mm -hmm. at home and your football becomes your life 
and your family becomes more like a vacation when you get yeah. to go see them. It's, it's not like a holiday. Um, but so you just you just learn to either you know you have to mentally separate yourself from your family and just focus on your football. Yeah. Um, and then eventually, like I said, the first year and a half, two years was difficult, and then after Celtic. I really got used to it and I got used to being away from family and it becomes easier. Celtic's been amazing for you, um, yeah. we'll talk about that soon, but something that I sort of saw as a key component to the change in the way women's football is now portrayed in the sense of like the Premier League or you know the um, FA for the women's side of things, you were one of the first trailblazers mm -hmm. to see you play your trade in England mm -hmm. and of course before that you had a few experiences around the world. But how was it being in England? Like I know now it's probably a lot more different mm -hmm. and you told me who you want to represent in the future. We'll talk about that team. Mm -hmm. But how was it being in England? Like I know weather-wise, Scotland, England and even Australia is the same. Mm -hmm. But uh, experience-wise, football-wise, being at West Ham, how was that? Yeah, it was incredible. I mean, ever since I was, uh, you know, maybe nine years old, I've said to my parents I wanted to play somewhere in Europe, somewhere overseas. Yeah. Um, so when the opportunity came up, um, I had a few opportunities before I turned 18, but because I was an amateur, it was a bit difficult. Yeah. But as soon as I turned 18 and I got my Italian passport, I was able to sign for West Ham. And yeah, it was an amazing experience. I think, um, you know, some people said maybe it wasn't the right decision at the time because England wasn't as big as it is now. The I league know. there. Big change. But, you know, after I did it, everyone saw like, it's, you know, it's amazing the, the way that the, the, way that the, the women are treated, the football standard, it's absolutely incredible. So yeah, no, it was an amazing experience for me and I think it was the right decision. It's, it's definitely something that we all look at and I think the pay side of things is definitely something that yeah. still needs to change. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, again, the inspiration that you have you know, installed into other you know, women who pursue their careers, they see that it's realistic for them. Mm -hmm. And I always say, no, nothing in life is a mistake or a bad decision because it always takes you on a path that you never planned mm -hmm. and hopefully it takes you to a place that you know, you can look back and say, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be where I am now. And, yeah. you know, where you are now is, you know, you won an award, yeah. um, you've held a trophy, a trophy, you made some amazing friends at Celtic. Yeah. Your stories recently, or the other day, I think when it was like, the two photo shoots on the floor. Yeah. Um, going from that experience to now going to where you are with Celtic, is that, you know, something that you always saw was gonna happen? Or was this opportunity now where you are, just something that's happened and you're just grateful for it? I think since I was younger, I've always had big dreams. I've always wanted to do the best that I can. Um, you know, with the support of my family, I always felt like I can pursue football, even mm -hmm. if, you know, back when I was younger, the money wasn't the best. Um, but I always felt like I could do it. So, no, I, I never predicted, like, you know, winning the awards, winning the cups. I didn't think that was going to happen. Um, I always hoped for it. But, you know, when those awards came and when the cups came, it just was incredible. You know, it was. It was like a reward for yeah. such a hard season, working so hard, you finally get a reward and it's, it ends up being worth it. Look, we're, we're really uh, thankful to have you here. I think when it comes to, when we look at the Australian, Australian footballers in, um, in the green and black mm -hmm. and to see you not only the face of the photo shoots, mm -hmm. I think that was something a lot of us um, Australians were so proud of. Mm -hmm. Is it weird having people being like, oh my God, you know, we're so proud of this person you know, that you probably have never experienced. The, I know being in home, like playing for, you know, City and Perth, mm -hmm. but now going over season, having other people sort of look up to you. Mm -hmm. Is that something that inspires you to do more? Yeah, of course, especially, I always say, especially when it's young kids, um, especially young girls, because I know when I was younger, I always had to look up to male players, you know, because it wasn't exactly. as big of a influence, the women. But now I, it's amazing when a young girl messages me on, Instagram or like they come to the games and they say you're my favorite player I want to be just like you or like the parents will tell me you know you inspired her to go start playing football Wow, it's you know, it's the best feeling like that's that's why you play so you can influence people like that This is a two-question um, part So have you seen anyone have your surname on the back of the shirts and the Celtic charge you extra for <laughs> the, the A's and letters so no, I know. So when I first joined the club, I um, they said, "What do you want on the back of your shirt?" And I said, "Yeah, I want you know Galabadarachi." And they were like, "No, impossible. It's it's impossible. The the, the, the name will go like this." <laughs> well, not, I think it was a Celtic player, Van Gogh Hersling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did that. Know, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. No, I think this is a, yeah, our comment straight. We're gonna cut this up as a real Celtic. Come on, keep the surname. <laughs> they, would they have had Gala? They 
I don't know. I, I, it's either I want the full name yeah. or nothing. It needs to be the full name. Or so nothing. do we have Jacinta? Hello? Yeah, we have Jacinta. They just wanted to do Jacinta. I was like, okay, it's fine. So then I, now people just know me at Celtic as Jacinta. Yeah. Um, but Is that something you want to see represented? Your surname on the back? Yeah, um, I, you know, I'm very proud of that surname. Um, cause it's unique and it's my dad's surname. But um, I think just in terms of punctuation and everything, Jacinta is fine yeah. as well. Um, but yeah, no, it's, I, some people have it, come to the games with, they managed to get Galabarachi oh, wow. on the back. Um, but a lot of the younger girls, um, you know, I see messages and stuff like that, or they tag me in their story and they've bought a Celtic shirt and they've put Jacinta on the back, which is incredible to think about. Something you said there that inspired me, being a father now to one, but hopefully, you know, by the two girls, mm-hmm. looking up to people. And mm-hmm. I think when it comes to women's football in the last five years, mm-hmm. that heroism is there now. And we have people to look up to. Um, you you said you looked up at I think it was Messi and mm-hmm. Maradona. Mm-hmm. If you were to be a kid now, who would you like say in the world? Do you think it's mm. a perfect timing for kids to look up to both men and women footballers? Of course, of course. I mean, even <clears throat> at some of the, my Celtic games, there's even younger boys there that are coming to the games. Yep. I mean, some, one of them was begging for my boots after the game, like a young boy, and I was like, I ended up giving them to him, but. For bro- boys and girls, it's ama- it's an amazing time that you know the girls can look up to um, professional female players, not just men's players, and I think that's really important. So they actually feel like playing football because there's women that are doing what they yeah. want to do. In looking up at idols, I think we all say you know there are the greats. Mm-hmm. I think for me, I never chose the best of the best because I always felt like I wanted to look up to someone that was more realistic for me because I know mm-hmm. I wouldn't reach the levels that maybe yourself or others have reached. Mm-hmm. Um, Maradona is definitely um, an almighty hero on the pitch um, and you being you know in the city that he had some experiences mm-hmm. how was the city itself and being in that sort of environment that someone you looked up to had been a part of yeah it was incredible I mean I've looked up to Maradona my whole life um, I always wanted to play like him so when I went to Napoli and you see how much he's affected the life there of the people it's it's absolutely incredible um you see his paintings. paintings all over the walls you know it's it's just amazing when you go into the center of napoli like it's incredible and you know i went to the stadium with my mom and you see you know people have put all around the stadium they've put um candles and their tops and scarves and everything it's absolutely incredible and now they've actually named the stadium after I've him seen. so that's you know, the influence that's, that he has there is amazing. Like, I couldn't believe it because I've always looked up to him. But when you go there, you see how much everyone loves him as well. Yeah. You've had an experience to play in that city, but we spoke before when we were doing our photo shoot. You said you want to play for a certain team. Mm-hmm. Now, I know who that is. And I know they've had an amazing experience for women's football in the mm-hmm. past couple of months, um, having over 90,000 people attend mm-hmm. their matches. Barcelona, is that right? Yes, Barca. I've, since I was younger, because again, because of Messi, um, Barca was always my team that yeah. I've watched. So everybody knows that if I was, if I wanted to play for one team, it's always been Barca since I was younger. Um, That's definitely achievable. Yeah. It's yeah, it's a big dream. It's a it's a big dream. But you know, I know that I believe in myself and my family believes in me. And if it happens one day, then it, I'd be I'd die happy if I played for Barca one day. So. So we'll see. I mean, I just have to keep working and keep working towards it and see what happens. Like I said, there's a big year next year. You've finally um, been called upon in a sense that we all knew what you can um, achieve and put forward to the squad. Um, is that something you also push for, to represent the green and gold and being a part of the Matilda setup and hopefully represent your family, but also the country on home soil next yeah, year? Yeah, of course. I mean, to be at a World Cup, firstly, it would be incredible yeah. Um, and yeah to put on the green and gold for Australia you know my family would be so proud um, to see me because I've seen me play for the youth so to have a senior play for the seniors would be amazing um, yeah so I've got this camp coming up hopefully it goes well and uh, we'll see how things go but yeah obviously my dream is to play the World Cup and to play for Australia it would be incredible and look I think when you do you know, achieve that goal. There's a lot of people looking um, up at you and you've definitely inspired a lot of young girls and, you know, 
in the footballing world, you've made a name for yourself, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you represent the Celtic team. Mm -hmm. um, what's a game day ritual um, that you have? Like, is there you know like a scenario where socks go on first or shin pads last? Yeah, I have I have a couple of things. Um, I like to get ready really early, so I'm probably the first one with ready to go out for the warm up. Yep. Um, yeah, I always put on my clothes first, like my top shorts, and then I always do my right sock first. Okay, right first. Sock, right boot, left boot. Oh wow. And um, another game day habit I have, which is probably not a good one, I need to be chewing gum. Yeah. I need to be chewing gum. So many coaches have tried to get me out of that habit. But like it's normal chewing gum flavoured or? Yeah, usually bubble gum. Yeah. Bubble gum for the game day. Yeah. Um, but I need to be chewing gum. I don't know why, like especially for game day. I think it's like the tension. Like, I need to chew gum. A lot of coaches have tried to get me away from it, but... Have you ever not followed that ritual and then felt like nothing was going to go right? Because when I never used to... When I would sleep through my alarm mm -hmm. and miss a game, mm -hmm. I felt like I affected the game by not watching it. Uh. Is that something that you... I know we, we spoke before, hey, you've got religious um, views, but when it comes to the footballing aspect, do you also see, like, maybe if you don't follow your guidelines of pre-game, mm -hmm. do you feel like that's going to affect you mentally? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. There's been a game, which is really bad, there's been a game where I forgot to get my gum. So I got the coach, I quickly ran to the sideline like five minutes into the game and got my gum. I had, I had to have it. We'll make sure the Matildas have gum <laughs> ready. But I think, I think that's going to be a good thing um, now. We'll try and hopefully get the fans to see you and have a pack of gum ready for you. But that's amazing. I think that's something, you know, the, the ones that don't make it to the positions that you're in, we look at that and we're like, that's actually a pretty cool aspect. Yeah. Um, and now we're getting towards the end of the chat. Is there anything in sort of your career you want to achieve personally? Um, I know you won the awards and stuff, but what's your like, what's the drive to get you to where you want to be? I mean, I always have long-term goals. Like one of the long-term goals is obviously to play for Barca and to represent Australia. Um, but I like to take things day by day. Um, you know, it's always, my, like my parents always say, it's always good to have long-term goals, but make sure that you do the day-to-day -day things and eventually yeah. you'll see the results will come but you need to make sure you do everything that you need to be doing every day so working hard making sure you're working the hardest putting the most effort in you know staying focused staying disciplined and eventually mm -hmm. you'll get to where you want to be yeah that's uh it's a it's a message that we all need to understand is that sometimes you know we work so hard but we need to understand like we have to take care of ourselves mm -hmm. as well mentally um I think next year is going to be a massive year for Australian football mm -hmm. and for the Matildas. It's really exciting to see that come to home soil, um, you know, family watching you. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, now I think the last question would be, and we spoke about it before, how do you take your coffee? I know you said you like it <laughs> simple, but yeah. how's, the, how's your coffee and what's your order? So I, usually I just get black coffee, no milk, nothing, and just two sugars. That's an easy solution in yeah. traveling, so you don't have to worry about it. I feel like there's, there's always those players that have lattes, and if it's not the right milk, that's it. Yeah. Cuts it out. So black coffee? Black coffee, two, one or two sugars, that's it. I have like two, three a day. That's amazing. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Like I think when it comes to coffee, it's a, another thing that we take first, mm -hmm. like gum. Mm -hmm. But um, anything else, guys? I think when it comes to having you down here, we're so thankful and we're really excited. Um, thank you so much for your time. We're excited to show you everyone the 10 essentials and the photo shoots. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We'll see you on pitch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.